Welcome to the Financial Coaches Podcast, where we talk about how to build your practice from startup to scale up while being the kind of coach your clients crave. Finally, a podcast for financial coaches. Here are your hosts, Maria Casillas and Cody Sizemore. Welcome back to the Financial Coaches Podcast. My name is Cody Sizemore, and I'm one of your co-hosts, and I am also joined here with Maria Casillas, who is your other co-host. Maria, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Awesome. Love it. Love it. So we have a lot to talk about today. Pretty juicy conversation of mm. things that I have heard countless times when talking to new or aspiring coaches. Uh, but before we hop into that, I just want to give you guys a friendly reminder that we do have a few ways for you guys to connect with us. So one of them is to join our Facebook group called New Money Habits Financial Coaches. And that's a really good way to just be plugged into a good community of like-minded coaches. Yeah. To ask questions, to get support, to be a part of different events that we have, like a co-working Wednesday or a monthly meetup or a book or a book uh, study. Uh, there's a lot of different opportunities for you to grow and to be plugged into a community of people who are doing exactly what you're doing or trying to do. So we definitely recommend that you do that. It's free to join. Again, it is New Money Habits Financial Coaches on Facebook. And the other thing that we wanted to throw out to you too is that if you have been listening to the show for a while and you feel inclined to leave a review or a rating on our show, we would really appreciate that because that lets us know how we're doing, but it also allows us to you know, push this out to other people who are looking for a resource like this. That's why we started this entire podcast in the first place is because mm -hmm. I was looking for a podcast that was specifically for financial coaches and there wasn't one at the time. And then Maria was like, hey, you want to start one? And I said, sure. Let's do it. So. <laughs> you rule the day. <laughs> yeah. so. awesome. But we're happy to be here to do yes. this. Yeah, we are happy to be here. <laughs> so what we want to talk about today, like I said, is something that has come up with me um, several times when I talk to new coaches, uh, aspiring coaches, coaches who are just starting out. Um, and that's the topic of charging for your services dun, dun, and asking dun. your clients to pay you money when they're already struggling with their finances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So um, let me ask you this. Are you hearing from these coaches that the clients are already like calling them on the carpet for this? Or is this entirely anticipatory? Like, are they just anticipating that clients are going to say this to them? It's a really, really good question. Um, it's almost entirely in the coach's head. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's from personal experience. Like I've never hopped on a call and discussed the potential of moving forward with coaching and what that looks like as far as like an investment goes to, you know, receive that help. Um, mm -hmm. I've never had someone say, well, how, how can you justify asking me to pay you money for you to help me? That's, mm -hmm. That has never happened. The conversation that has happened is how can I pay you? Mm -hmm. What do I need okay. to do in order to pay you? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but every time that the question of how can you justify it comes up, that is when I'm speaking to another coach who okay. is just in their own head thinking that that's going to happen or, you know, for some reason they think it's wrong to charge people for whatever reason. Um, that's where the, the question comes up. It's never has, it never, at least in my experience, it's never had to be with clients. It's always with coaches. Okay. So I can tell you that uh, I have seen not necessarily clients do this, but trolls. I've definitely seen trolls do this. Oh, yeah. And I'm wondering oh, if, if that's serious about it. Yeah. Yes. And I wonder if that's kind of where some of this, you know, mentality comes from for the coaches. Uh, they're, you know, maybe kind of putting themselves out there. They're letting someone know, Hey, I'm either they're telling them that they're hanging their shingle out or they're just kind of announcing that they're thinking about it. Right. And then all of a sudden people come out of the woodwork and like, well, how dare you do that? Like what, what gives you the authority to charge people, blah, blah, blah. So you start to see all of these negative messages. And again, most of them are just from trolls on the internet. Uh, but I think as you know, 
those things that we hear from outside sources really do have an impact on us that, you know, positive and or negative. Uh, and oftentimes the negative ones are louder than a lot of the positive ones. So I'm willing to guess that these individuals who are coming to you and saying this is something that's kind of in their head, it was planted from somewhere and then it just festers and, you know, they create all of this negative self-talk and, and then start asking themselves and they try to logic their ways out of that. And the more they try to logic themselves, they're like, yeah, why am I charging for this? These people don't have the money, right? And so they, they kind of go down that di- downward spiral. So what what let's what do you want to talk about with regard well, to this? We- first, I want to address what you just said. Yeah. Because the, the, these trolls, I want to argue, and maybe this isn't 100% of the time, but I want to argue that the people who are saying that kind of stuff likely are not in a service-based industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason Mm -hmm. I say that is because if they've never put themselves out there and provided a service that actually helps people in order to support their family or to, you know, to, um, create impact in the world, then they don't understand why you need to be compensated for providing that service. Right. Mm -hmm. So my question to them would be like, okay, well, what are you doing to help change people's lives? Just trolling people? (laughs) <laughs> sounds good. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. You know, like, mm-hmm. like people do that because they want to make life difficult for people and people who want to make life difficult for others likely are not in or have ever been in a position to where they make a real impact on people's lives. Mm-hmm. Mic mm-hmm. drop. Yeah. Well, not so only that. Don't pay attention to the, the trolls. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, and this is more about trying to figure out where the origin of some of that thought process comes from, if not coming from actual clients. Um, so, but not only that, but I think it also comes down to priorities. So if you're in that, in that spiral of trying to logic your way into or out of something, realize that a lot of people who will, you know, poo poo the idea of paying for something like this, also have no problem paying for, you know, streaming services and stuff. Uh, So it's not that they, it's not that they can't see the value in some sort of service base. I mean, maybe that's not so much service, but maybe something like having a, you know, a massage every single month. Mm -hmm. If they're willing to pay for something like that, which is more of a service, then it really just comes down to priorities. And, you know, I think oftentimes one thing that you didn't mention that I think is super important, not maybe maybe for the trolls, but for the people who aren't naturally trolls and that's what they do with their whole lives, but they still might throw in some of these negative comments. Some of them are just realizing that they are (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> your ideal client. <laughs> like they are the person who needs those services and they're having a really hard time coming to terms with that. And so it's just a lot easier to knock that which you're doing than it is to open their eyes to what they're doing. So yeah. that's another side of that coin. Yeah. And it's like, you know, a uh, perfect example is a doctor, right? Like doctors charge a lot of money, mm-hmm. sometimes a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. But people will pay that because they understand that they need to have a person who knows what they're doing in that space in order to make sure that they, A, have a healthy life, or B, can save their life, right? Mm -hmm. And money is very similar to that. Like, it literally, just like your health, it affects your life more than most other things, right? And it's like, okay... If we're if we understand that a doctor needs to be compensated for that because it's it's reflecting an area of our lives that is extremely important, something that does you know set us up to either have the best life possible or a really really struggling uh, kind of life. It's the same thing through finances. Like you can you can work with someone to have you set up the best life possible or a life that's full of struggle. And, yeah. you know, why should the doctor get paid, but the person who helps you with your finances not not get paid? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So. So this is you trying to help logic, <laughs> help people yeah. identify some of the logic of why, why wouldn't you get paid? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what are do you, what do you think are some of the, some of those subsequent negative messages that people tell themselves. So what I'm asking is this, as an aspiring coach, you kind of 
put it out there that you might be dabbling or, or wanting to start something like this, you hear a couple of those things and you start to ask yourself, yeah, why would I, why would I do this? Other than some sort of, um, you know, doctor analogy, why else would somebody charge for this? And why else would somebody pay for this? Yeah. Um, when I first started, I was doing, I was charging very, very little, very little. Um, 75 bucks a month kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and sometimes like, you know, so my wife, when I first met her, she was a single mom and she went through a lot of struggles and stuff like that. So I even did some free coaching with some single moms because I really, really wanted to help them. It was something that I was, you know, living with currently. Like I knew exactly like what my wife had went through when we were dating. So I felt, I felt very called to help single moms in particular. Uh, so I didn't charge them. And with charging that little or not charging at all, what I had found was, is that I was spending time and energy and resources to help these people, mm -hmm. but they weren't making progress. <laughs> and mm -hmm. the reason they weren't making progress and they weren't helping themselves was because they didn't have any skin or very, very little skin in the game at all. So right. they weren't taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And that frustrated me because I was like, am I a bad coach? Am I not supposed to be doing this? Um, you know, why am I even charging 75 bucks a month? Should I charge less because my services aren't that valuable? Should I just stop in general? All of those thoughts start to come up. But then after I, you know, talked to, uh, actually it was Mike. Uh, Mike Keneally, which is, you know, someone at New Money Habits, I talked to him about this and he said, your issue is that you're not charging enough. Mm -hmm. And I said, and I said to him, like, listen, I don't want to, you know, be a burden on these people if they're already trying to, you know, if they're struggling with their finances already, I don't want to do that. And he goes, I, I understand, but just trust me. Like if you raise your prices, people will pay you and they will take it more seriously and they'll actually get the results that they're looking for. Just trust me on this. And I said, okay. So I raised my prices and something weird happened. People paid me mm -hmm. and they were happy to pay me. And then after they paid me, because they made a larger investment, they showed up and they said, hey, I'm doing this. That's right. Because I've made this investment, I'm not going to let it go to waste. So I'm going to show up. I'm going to do the things that are recommended. I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to stay consistent. I'm going to get those results. And that's what happened. So charging people and, you know, charging people a good amount actually helps them versus charging them very little or charging them none at all. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm really glad you brought that up. <clears throat> and there's two things I want to say. One of them is a story and I'll tell that next. But the other one is that this manifests itself in a lot of different ways. And one of the ways is, I think we've mentioned this before, is the idea of I just want to serve. So uh, this is my calling and I, you know, I don't want to charge. I want this to be a pro bono thing. And I have noticed that there are, there are a select few people who really do feel that way. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the people that I've coached who's come in saying that after we do some unpacking, we realize that, that was just their justification <laughs> for all of these other negative thoughts that they've had about their ability to charge and uh, you know other people's ability to pay. So I'm really glad that you brought that up because I see that all the time. The other thing that I wanted to share is that um, earlier this morning, I was listening to a radio program and I heard the person say um, that that their parents or grandparents, excuse me, was praying for them as a child. And she said, he said that um, what his grandmother actually said to him one day was, I just prayed and prayed and prayed that you would get in trouble. And everyone over there was laughing at him like, well, that's one way to pray for your grandkid. And I'm sitting there going, why is this such a shock? Because of my behavioral psychology background. I'm like, that's exactly what we need. <laughs> like, because if you don't have that consequence, then there's no reason to make a change. And so uh, this came to mind when you were just talking about the reason that they showed up for you is because there was a little bit of pain that comes with writing a check for 
$2,000 or even $750. It's different than writing a check for $75 or swiping your card or whatever. Um, so if we don't ever experience the negative consequence of our behavior, if if because we get ourselves into a mess and by ourselves, I mean us, but also our clients, if we, if we get into a mess and it was because we were not good with our money, we weren't smart with it, we weren't intentional with it. And then everybody says, well, because I didn't do well, now I don't have money. So you can't charge me for that. Where is the consequence in that? Where's the pain in that? And if there is no consequence or pain, then where's the intrinsic motivation for change? And I think that's what we are so lacking when we say, well, they don't have it. And so we're not going to charge it. No, actually, you're doing them a disservice by not charging them because you're not helping them. You're not helping them to feel that consequence of poor choices. And that's what you need to do because otherwise they won't ever start wanting to make good choices for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's a really, really good point. Like, and you know, we're not here to, you know, be the morality police or anything like that, or, you know, to point fingers and say, well, you messed up. So now you got to pay for it. That's not, not. that's not what we're saying. Um, What we're saying is that in order to actually help people, you need to allow them to feel that pain. And part of it is investing, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, So that they do feel that pain. They understand that it is an issue. They understand that it stops now and that they need to make the changes necessary in order to live and create the life that they actually want to. Mm -hmm. Um, And you're not going to be able to do that if you're doing it for free. You're not going to be able to do that if you're doing it for very little because that, 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 that lesson is not going to uh, come across to them. Uh, they'll think that they can just go through it easily. And, and if it doesn't work, then, Hey, it doesn't work. Uh, and we'll just yeah. keep living this way for the rest of our lives. And we're just stuck and nothing's ever going to work. And I'm never going to reach out for coaching again because it doesn't work and all this kind of stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be stuck here for the rest of my life. Yeah. You don't want that, you know, yeah. and in a really, really big, way of not having that happen is to have them actually rip that bandaid off and declare that this is the last time that Mm -hmm. I'm allowing myself to stay where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I'm done. And it's so funny you use the analogy of ripping the bandaid off because as I was waiting for you to finish that thought, uh, one of the things that came to my mind was that if you are going to try something that is, you know, destructive behavior, for example, and you know that the consequence will literally just give you a Band-Aid, you're more likely to engage in that behavior because who cares? It's a Band-Aid, right? Um, But if you think that that is likely to end in, you know, paralyzation or death, or or surgery, you might be a little less inclined to take that risk. And so, yeah, I mean, that that's, that's what we mean here. Again, it's not, I'm really glad you said something about, you know, the moral police, because that's not what this is about at all. It is just understanding human behavior, though, <laughs> and, and understanding that humans take risks all the time, and they do risk assessment all the time. And if they know that spending I'm going to use the words spending recklessly, even though that has that implication of a moral implication. It's not. Um, But if they're going to go and continue to do what they're doing and they never experience any discomfort because of it, then why would they change? Like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, like, just logically. So I'm, I'm really, really glad that you brought this topic up because I think whether it comes from somebody saying something negative, you know, as a troll, whether it comes from family members, you know, like, hey, I know you, I know the, all the mistakes you've made and you can't go help other people because you, you didn't do so well yourself. That happens a lot too. No matter where that negative self-talk comes from, I do think it's important to start recognizing that there is a logical reason and a behavioral one for actually charging people. Yeah. Yep. You hit the nail on the head. So. Awesome. Yeah. And now we need a band-aid. No, <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I really appreciate this discussion with you. I know that there that there are a lot of people who struggle with this. So I'm glad that you brought this to the table. Uh, and you guys, this is where we get a lot of our best content is from you. You are telling us, what are you struggling with? You reach out to me, you reach out to, um, to Cody and you're, 
I, I was stuttering because technically you guys can reach out to new money habits as well. And it filters into us. Um, so we get to see this and that's where we know here's where you're struggling and we want to be able to help you with those things. So continue to bring that to our attention in whichever manner is best for you. And we will continue to talk about it right here on the airwaves. Absolutely. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, we will catch you next week for another episode. And until then, keep crushing it. All right. You guys have a great rest of your week. Thanks so much. (laughs) Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Financial Coaches Podcast, brought to you by New Money Habits and Sizemore Financial Coaching. Submit your questions to our hosts by emailing podcast at newmoneyhabits.com. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of future episodes and join our growing group of like-minded coaches on Facebook. And until next time, happy coaching. Music provided by Summer School.